Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Christmas has come, so let's take a look. What I have sitting here on the mill table is the facing attachment for my boring mill. So there's the gear that goes on the column, mounts on there. This bolts to the spindle face, or not the spindle, yeah, I guess the spindle face, and the, the quill passes through it. So, I had my eye out for one of these for a long time. They're quite hard to come up with, but finally managed to locate one and make a deal on it. So, here it is. This is the boring facing bar that goes on it and use a long bar or a short piece of tool steel in here facing attachment so this thing's 24 inches in diameter so it can face up to 48 total i guess uh really more than that if you run the tool bed off the end but that'd be getting pretty close to the limit on this machine because you'd have to be able to swing that and uh, well, I guess you got four foot of column so you could get way out there if you had to it'd be a big giant fly cutter but four foot's a good size without getting too slung out so you could face off a big surface plate or something with that in a single pass which would uh, make a pretty smooth finish I think so it'll be definitely something worth having around. Uh, I'll leave it on the mill all the time. This mill has a uh, device that's mounted to the spindle now that you can crank down to stabilize. Uh, it's basically got a squeeze collet that squeezes onto the spindle to stabilize it for milling operations help take out any of the play that's in there because there's got to be play or you couldn't move it in and out so plus it's got some wire so you can use this to take up for the wear or run it in a spot where there isn't very much where it's already tight uh, it gets tighter and looser depending on where it is so you have to run it loose enough to be able to traverse the whole length or just tighten it down and use it in that one spot and then loose it back up other thing too, if the facing attachment's on, you gotta lock out the sub spindle. And there should be a bolt kind of clamp deal that holds that gear, and I don't have it, so I'll have to fabricate that in order to be able to put this on here. Should the job arise, it will call for it. Other thing too, the if you're really trying to do accurate work, the tram of the mill becomes very important with this. And I know that my headstock is canning downhill slightly. So if you run a real big face mill and make multiple passes, you'll get zebra stripes going up. Uh, it's about a half a thousandth or so for every three inches or a three inch face mill will be out about a half thousand roughly, which for most things doesn't make any difference. But if you're trying to do, you know, something like a mill table or something, you wouldn't really want that. So man, someday I'll pull the headstock off here and do some scraping on it, try and get the back end tilted down, bring its front end up so that it would run true because the column runs very true somebody's redone it at some point in time since it's left the factory I'm sure well, I didn't get the headstock set correctly I don't really know but anyway it's not if you try and correct it to get the gibbs any tighter it'll just lock up so <clears throat> it is what it is at this point and what it is is a 75 year old machine that still earns its keep so this is the selector to change the direction or have it in neutral. <clears throat> and then there's a feed rate on the back. 
And right there you can change the feed rates of how much it feeds out per revolution. Or you can manually feed it with a screw in there, but it's really designed for automatic operation because all this is spinning past the column, which can't move it in and out. But I so the quill does stick through it and move in and out. So we'll fit on there and essentially takes up about the same space as this piece does. Maybe a little bit more. So it wouldn't quite come as far back on the table with it, obviously, because this piece you can, with the mill up, it can go out over the top. But this piece is always gonna be pretty much swinging low enough it would be below the table. You know, we'll come up and try and clean the bolts off the face of it. That'd be a bad day. And a lot of times I see these on mills and everything's off of the slides and they're not even using that part of it. They're just using the boring attachment. And it may be that it would be fine and not chatter, but for now I'm just going to leave it the way it is until I get a job that is suitable for that. Or if I need to bore a great big hole, you know, I can uh, now adjust and bore holes to 24 inches in diameter easy and run the facing slide on out. You can go way more than that. You go up to four foot diameter bore hole. I've never cut a hole anywhere close to that size. Uh, even two foot would probably be bigger than what I've normally bored. Uh, about 18 inches is probably about the biggest of anything I've bored in the past, cylinder wise. But you never know what might come along and to have the tools to be able to do it is very valuable. So and while we're over here talking about the GNL, I got something else. Oh, my friend and fellow engineer at Vaughn Industrial, Tom Utley, who makes these fantastic reproduction uh, name plates for vintage machinery made this GNL tag for me. That's supposed to go right there. And it fits perfect. Looks way too good for the rest of the machine though. Well, I think he's trying to shame me into repainting this thing. Same time, if I got to take it apart to uh, fix the alignment, I should probably do that before I paint it. So I'm not going to put that on just yet, but I have it for one of the Sunday things to put it on there. It'll certainly dress the machine up a whole lot, give it some high class. That beautiful. Just like the original. See it matches the GNL logo there. So this this high pro division I mean, that was after GNL had acquired part of the Cincinnati's stuff. So Cincinnati was the high pro before GNL owned them. It means that facing head's a little newer than my mill, probably. Also, there's the logo there, too. So, thank you very much, Tom. Thing really looks good. Uh, if you have the need for a reproduction nameplate, contact Tom at Vaughn Industrial and they can get you fixed up. Make like these feed charts and name plates and all that stuff. It looks like he's got it figured out pretty good because the piece turned out nice. Mm -hmm. Someday it'll live right there, proud distinction. <laughs>